As far as I'm concerned, in bodybuilding, there are two topics that will forever be debated. The volume versus intensity debate and the heavy versus light training debate. I've spent a lot of time covering the former, and many of my training videos cover exactly how to structure your training volume to build more muscle. But heavy versus light training, that's a separate topic that deserves its own video. So today we're going to cover the pros and cons of both, as well as what approach you should be using if your goal is to build more muscle. But first, we need to establish that heavy versus light training is completely subjective, and heavy or light for you will be completely different from someone else. So a much better way to gauge both is high reps versus low rep training, using appropriate weights for the target rep range. To keep it simple, for bodybuilding purposes, the majority of your training should be between 5 reps and 20 reps. And the closer you get to 5 reps, the heavier the weight should be. And the closer you get to 20, the lighter the weight should be. But again, that's not to say a hard set of 20 taken to failure is light. If you're able to squat 405 for 20 reps, that might be light weight compared to what you can handle for only 5 reps. But 405 is 405, no matter how you cut it. And once you get strong, light weights no longer exist just lighter weights for more reps. Keep that in mind as we talk about higher reps going forward. Now there are benefits to both low and high reps in bodybuilding. Lower reps shine on big compound movements where form needs to be kept tight for safety reasons. And generally the more technical the lift, the lower the reps should be. So things like squats, bench, deadlifts, overhead presses, or any other movement that requires a lot of stabilization and can be loaded heavily should be trained mostly in the five to 10 rep range. Now that lower rep range doesn't promote more muscle growth because the weights are heavier, like many people think. It promotes more muscle growth because form and technique are usually much more dialed in. And as a result, the target muscles are doing the majority of the work. Now for really advanced guys, stepping outside of the lower rep ranges on these compound movements can work well. As again, when you're that strong, the weights start to get so heavy at five reps that sometimes we need to go higher reps just to give the joints a break. But I almost never recommend guys performing up to 20 reps on these big compound movements, unless the form is impeccable from the first rep to the last. Now where the higher rep ranges and lighter weights shine? Generally on all isolation movements and or exercises that can easily encourage cheating. Great examples are bicep curls, lateral raises, and tricep extensions. If I handed you a barbell and told you, load it up with a weight that you can handle for only five repetitions and no more, Nine times out of 10, you're gonna see some more body English perform than you would otherwise. And as a result, less overall stimulation on the biceps because the shoulders are now engaged, momentum is used to swing the weights up, and now it becomes more of a full body movement rather than an isolation. Other isolation movements like lateral raises for only five to eight reps will definitely result in every other muscle but the side delts moving the weight. And at the same time, five reps on something like a skull crusher, especially for very strong guys, can result in some heavy weights lifted, but also lots of tension and wear and tear on the joints. And movements like these done for low reps can be brutal on the elbows in the long run. So generally on movements like these, much more moderate weights will result in better form, technique, and as a result, more work done to the target muscle and less wear and tear on the joints. So as you can see, my stance on the whole low rep versus high rep debate is it really just boils down to specific movements and some lend better to lower reps than others. And it's not the amount of reps that build muscle, but getting the most out of each individual set. If you're gonna perform a working set in the gym, it needs to be taken to at least near failure. If you're performing each set with a similar amount of intensity, regardless if it's five reps or 20 reps, the muscle building results will be very similar. Again, we're talking specifically about building muscle, not powerlifting or strength training. To get the most out of your bodybuilding training, I recommend you use a mix of both lower reps and higher reps, all taken near failure. One of my personal favorite ways to program this into my training is the use of heavier training days and lighter training days, where many of the bigger compound movements are trained together for lower reps and the less technical and more isolation movements are trained together on a separate day for much higher reps. This is the formula I found that not only gets the best results, but also allow for more consistent progress in the gym, less wear and tear over time, and overall more longevity in the sport and continued progress in the long run. And if you're looking for a program that incorporates both these methods and a system designed to specifically build more muscle using proven old school bodybuilding training methods, I recommend you check out my five day mass gain program in the description. And as always, if you wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.